Well, thank you, Angus, uh, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. What um, uh, marvellous news from, from Jerry about the proposed investment by NAREC, uh, a massive boost of confidence in the sector for which we're extremely grateful. Um, I'm delighted to speak to you this afternoon, albeit a somewhat depleted audience, but I'm sure that uh, what we lack in quantity in the audience we make up for in quality. Uh, and I'm delighted just to say a few words to you in bringing this conference to a close. But I'd like to begin by extending my sincere thanks to Edinburgh Chamber of Commerce and to Liz McCreevy in particular for the huge amount of work which they put into this conference, which uh, I think has, as Angus has said, delivered uh, a, a number of very positive developments. I know they've been supported by... Uh, Lloyd's TSB Scotland, who sponsored this conference. And again, we are extremely grateful to Lloyd's TSB uh, as the main sponsor for that support. We've also heard over the past two days uh, a wide range of speakers and panellists who have made very significant contributions to the debate, uh, which will take us forward. Um, we're especially grateful to those who have travelled from uh, many different countries in the world, as, as far flung as Korea, Dubai. Uh, we have heard uh, from the Danish government, Christian Muller, the Deputy Director General of the Danish Energy Agency, and we are grateful to, uh, uh, to, to that perspective from a nation that has had 30 years of experience in low uh, carbon energy. Um, I received a letter from a wind farm protester this morning uh, it said nobody ever came to Scotland to see wind turbines. Last week, I visited Glen Kinchy Distillery, bumped into a, a group of Danish students who told me that they came to Scotland specifically to visit the Gaia factory in Glasgow and see the wind turbines. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have heard some pretty positive news over the past few days. Uh, and I just pick out some of some of the highlights. Uh, Senior Galan last night spoke at the dinner at the Signet Library of uh, his company's plans to invest £12 billion over the next 10 years. Uh, and we've also heard, of course, the investment uh, of 340 immediate jobs uh, in their retail outlet. We're extremely grateful for that. The First Minister announced our own £103 million renewable energy investment fund yesterday, uh, and he also announced the, the fact that uh, Scottish Enterprise uh, have uh, 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 decided to award £4.3 million in the Hunterston offshore wind test project in partnership with SSE. Two great steps forward, I would suggest. Uh, and over the past year, uh, I wanted to concentrate on some positives, but before I do so, I'm aware that the kind of overhang of this conference, uh, not all of which I've been able to, to attend, but the reports I've had indicate that the overwhelming concern of the conference was uncertainty about the regulatory framework and EMR in particular. I think to be specific, what is lacking is a, specific, is a clear set of rules and framework. It's not general uncertainty. It's lack of specific rules in, in EMR. Uh, and I wanted to say to you that I'm confident that this uncertainty will be removed. We wish to see it removed as quickly as possible. Uh, uh, and I'm very confident that we will see that happen. Why is that the case? Well, firstly, because from the meeting that uh, myself and the First Minister had with uh, Ed Davey this morning at Butte House over breakfast, uh, we have confidence confidence that the Cabinet Secretary and the Scottish Government are working together to deliver EMR uh, successfully and as quickly as possible. We are confident that that support extends to the very top in government in the UK. We are confident that the difficulties about which we've heard at this conference will be overcome. And above all, we are confident that there is the will to deliver the EMR uh, framework, which we all need. Uh, and I think it is that will to deliver that is the most important thing. Yesterday morning, I was uh, opening a new factory 
uh, uh, of uh, Glacier Oils in the Parkhead area of Glasgow. They opened there because of the M74 extension. The M74 extension has transformed the transport system in Glasgow and the West Coast. But the point I'm making here is that for 10 years, we didn't have the M74 extension. In fact, we never thought it was going to happen. We campaigned for year after year. I can remember the press releases put out by our predecessors in 2001, first steps towards the M74 extension. Sarah Boy, actually, she was transport minister at the time. Good, good intentions. It wasn't delivered for a decade. So people thought it may never happen. Well, the point is, now that it is here, nobody can remember what it was like when it wasn't. And companies such as Glacier Oil, and more, because there's more planned to go there, if you've seen the site, you will know, are there because of that investment. They have made their commitment uh, because government did deliver, albeit too late. So the point I'm making is that uh, whilst we are all concerned, especially in the financial community, uh, about what is described as uncertainty, in fact, to be specific about it is simply the lack of a clear set of rules, a framework for investment, so that we can have the confidence that you all want. And I am extremely confident that that will emerge. And I wanted to run through a number of other positive developments over the past 12 months with which I have had some involvement as Energy Minister. Uh, and the first, as we've heard today from Lord Smith, uh, in what I understand was an extremely uh, impressive presentation regarding the uh, future work which the Green Investment Bank will do. And I'd like to say that the achievement of bringing the headquarters of the Green Investment Bank to Edinburgh happened because of the political unity uh, and the unity uh, of that campaign. It was a campaign led not by politicians but by Edinburgh Chamber of Commerce. The presentation of that campaign, the marshalling of the arguments, was thorough, detailed and sound. Uh, it had the support of Glasgow. Glasgow supported Edinburgh. I phoned up the leader of Glasgow Council to procure that support. There was no problem about that. Uh, it had the support of all parties in the Scottish Parliament. And we succeeded in that campaign. Uh, and that was a tremendous step forward uh, for Scotland and I think the UK uh, uh, as uh, well. Just uh, a month ago in the Scottish Parliament something somewhat unusual happened. All MSPs agreed. They agreed on the text of a motion which we had uh, prepared and discussed beforehand and I had uh, been involved in lengthy discussions, the detail of which I won't uh, detain you with now. But suffice it to say that we emerged from a debate about EMR where Conservative, SNP, Labour, Liberal and Green all agreed on a form of words. We will recognise that it is extremely important that we emerge as quickly as possible with a system of electricity market reform uh, which provides the investment framework that you need. Every politician in Scotland, in our Parliament, agreed. Uh, that backing, I think, is, is welcome to you uh, uh, as investors, as developers. Um, we also uh, announced our our own Scottish Renewable Obligation Contracts uh, Framework to 2017. And we've incentivised further, in particular, hydro schemes at One Rock, uh, slightly higher than south of the border, and also innovative offshore, uh, f floating uh, offshore in particular. Uh, it was Fred Olson that pointed out to me the obvious that we have deeper waters off Scotland's shores, and therefore it does rather make sense to provide an incentive for engineers and developers to uh, develop further and receive a proper incentive for so doing uh, that particular technology, which of course uh, companies such as Statoil have uh, already been pursuing successfully, uh, such as in the high wind project. So those two decisions, I believe, uh, will send positive signals to the market, and I understand that in relation to hydro schemes, there already are de investment decisions which are likely to be brought forward in part in consequence of, uh, of that decision. Um, we have also worked very closely, especially with Scottish Power and SSE, but across the industry in seeking to develop the skills shortage um, because we have this uh, remarkable success of having ahead of our friends south of the border seen the approval of grid projects to a value of £7,000 million in Scotland 
and many of these are about to proceed. Uh, and I obviously work closely with both companies to uh, achieve that. Uh, and indeed, the civil engineering sector in Scotland uh, now, uh, uh, according to some accounts, uh, which are the subject of more detailed survey activity at the moment, account for, uh, in respect of their turnover, nearly 20%. In other words, the renewable sector is now essential, essential to our civil engineering uh, 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 sector in Scotland. And we know that renewable energy now supports over 11,000 jobs in Scotland, which you may be surprised to hear is actually more than the Scottish whisky industry supports. Already we have seen a delivery of huge benefits uh, to Scotland in renewable energy, and we've seen that success accelerate, as the First Minister uh, pointed out uh, in his remarks. But the last positive development over the past year, which I specifically wanted to mention, I think is perhaps the, the most significant of all to you uh, uh, and to me most certainly. Uh, and that is that we have been wrestling for some time with the objective of ensuring that our islands, the Western Isles, Orkney and Shetland, are not penalised, are not prevented from seeing the uh, realisation of their massive potential in wave and tidal and most in the shorter term onshore wind and offshore wind. And of course you are all aware of the increasing cost of the estimated increasing estimated cost of the connections, especially to the Western Isles, from around about 500 million to around 750 million. The consequence of that is that the charge is already eight times higher than off GEM's uh, uh, recommended rate for the mainland are now 15 times higher. Back in May, I came up with the suggestion that the Scottish Government and the UK Government should work closely together, form a working group uh, in order to analyse uh, the, uh, the problem and identify options for solutions. Today and at this conference, perhaps actually because of this conference, Ed Davey made the announcement that he has agreed to set up that working group. And the reason that I wasn't here at lunchtime was that we had the first meeting of it, uh, uh, no time like the present. And that's important because of this. I can't think of any other area where the Scottish and the UK government have decided to set up a short life working group. The commitment by Ed Davey in particular that he wants to work with us in order to find a solution to what is a complex and challenging problem, uh, but one where a solution really must be found uh, in order to achieve the success that we all want to see from the marvellous projects that have been consented in each of the islands. Uh, that that political commitment is there, is solid and is reliable. And we were happy to give some assurances to that effect to some of the major developers who were present at the meeting at lunchtime today. So that commitment to work together across governments north and south of the border uh, I think is very encouraging. We can leave the politics outside the room and get on with providing the political support, the First Minister and myself, uh, Ed Davey and his team of ministers in order to drive forward the objectives of the low carbon sector uh, and indeed uh, in particular uh, renewable energy. So um, ladies and gentlemen, I must say I have spoken to larger audiences in my time but it has been a real pleasure. I'm very grateful to you all for your contribution. Uh, we look forward to working ever more closely uh, with you and as Energy Minister I particularly have the, the privilege of that task uh, and the pleasures as well. So many thanks to all the organisers, uh, to all the speakers, to all the participants, to all the employees at the Edinburgh International Conference Centre who have been so generous uh, and courteous in looking after us and making us welcome to this uh, fine city uh, and may I all in conclusion thank you for your attendance and wish you all a safe journey home. Thank you.